Right before we jump into this real world review of the Nikon D5, I want to remind you if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com here in beautiful Chester, PA at Talon Energy Stadium to do a real world review of this Nikon D5. That's right, this is a $6,500 body and there is no better way to do a review of it than to take it out into the real world and shoot some MLS soccer. I want to thank the Philadelphia Union for allowing me to come down here and shoot this as well as thank Borrow Lenses for hooking me up with this 600 f4 and a 400 2.8 because if you're going to shoot one of the top of the line cameras that Nikon makes, you better bring out the big guns to do it right. So. I'm excited to get in there and shoot in the real world. Let's get into the stadium and shoot some soccer. This is, this is super fun. Being down on a professional sporting event like this, this is great. So what is my goal with this D5 coming out here to shoot with? My, honestly, my goal is to get great soccer shots. That's why I broke out the 600 f4, the 400 28, the 300 f4, and a bevy of other lenses. Now, I don't know which ones I'm going to use just yet. All I know is that this 600, from where I'm sitting in the corner, where the corner kicks happen, I can fill the entire net at the other end. But my goal here is to use this D5 to its full ability. The 12 frames a second, how does the focusing work? How are the 153 focusing points? Because those are the things that you buy this camera for. And of course, they added a touchscreen. How does that work? Does that help my workflow? Does that actually add any value to this camera? But my goal when I do real world reviews is to come out here and do real world situations, not try to push it over the top and do things that don't even make sense. We're gonna use it in a real situation. My ideal settings for out here, one one thousandth of a second or higher to freeze the action, which means because this is a night game, I may need to push the ISO up a little higher, but we know, or we think we know, that this D5 can handle it. But we will find out when we're shooting the game. I have never shot professional soccer before. I've done indoors, I've done college, I've done high school soccer, I've even done the Jewish Olympics in Israel. This is a beautiful field. Now it's gonna give me some challenges to try to think about what I wanna capture. I wanna fill the frame top to bottom with great shots. I don't wanna crop, I am not a cropper, though this 20, however many megapixels this bad boy has will let me crop. I'm not looking to do that. I wanna get great action shots and that's why I have all the different lenses here. But one of the most important things to test out with this camera is gonna be the continuous focus while I'm shooting 12 frames a second as players are running down the field towards me. Being that this lens doesn't zoom, I'm gonna to have to start at a certain point and see if I can track them all the way to me as best as possible to see how well this camera tracks the focus. Remember that there are two different versions of the Nikon D5 that you can pick up. One has two XQD cards and the other has two compact flash cards. Now, I personally purchased the one with the two XQD card slots. Now, why is that? because they're the newer cards. They are faster. If you're gonna be shooting a lot of video and 4K video at that, you wanna have the faster transfer rate and that's what those XQD card slots give you. The cards that I'm using right now are the 128 gigabyte XQD Lexar cards and I have to say they are blazingly fast. That's why we were able to get the images from the buffer to the card super fast without having to wait or have the buffer fill. So I highly recommend that you pick the one that has the two XQD slots. The great part about having two cards in your camera is that I am shooting it redundant. The same thing that's going here, the raw files, are also going into slot two, so I have basically a backup of the first card. I wanna have that just in case anything ever goes wrong. In the rare instance that that happens, I have the backup. So, you know, before a game starts, you have to figure out what your exposure is gonna be. The light is gonna continue to drop. I'm at 4,000 ISO right now at one two thousandth of a second at f4. That's gonna change throughout the game. Actually, it's gonna change until it's completely dark. Look at that, look at that. Unfortunately, it's their back, but we got it. Coming the other way, we got it. That's, oh, it feels good. That's when you motor drive, is when that head ball's coming and then you cycle through the images 
Oh, oh, look at that. There you go. 600 millimeter. I almost want more. So this camera lets me do 12 frames a second. You can do 14 frames if you lock the mirror up, but 12 frames a second with continuous focus is what you really want. But let me just say this, you don't need to motor, you don't need to spray and pray. It's not about spraying and praying. Yes, 12 frames a second is great, but if you just, there's very few circumstances where you're gonna hold the shutter down for a, for a full second. It's about those quick bursts, two, three, four shots in a row that give you the action that you're going for. If you hold your finger down for, a sh uh, for 12 or 24 shots in a row, you might as well be shooting movies at that point. So let's talk about the video functions of this camera. I didn't shoot any video during the game. That's because I wanted to focus on capturing images because that's what this D5, in my opinion, is really meant to do. The fact that it does 4K, which we're shooting with right now with the D5, is a bonus, but the three minutes is a killer. When they do update the firmware, hopefully they will update it so you can get 10, 15, 20 minutes at 4K, but it's not even the highest end 4K, it's UHD, and a lot of other camera manufacturers do a better job with 4K, and they may even offer you 60 frames a second at 4K, where this camera doesn't, and it also does a crop factor of 1.5 when you're shooting 4K video. So, if they can make changes and make that better, that's, a, that's an important step forward, but remember this, the three minutes, yeah, it's only three minutes. But if you are going to shoot long form video with a camera like this, you can use the HDMI out and do a clean signal out to an Atomos and basically have unlimited 4K shooting because it's gonna be much better, much cleaner, and it's not doing it internal. Now we're using the D5 right now to record me in 4K, but we're gonna deliver the final product in 1080, which means that we're shooting it a little wider because what we can do is a push in like this, and that goes ahead and gives us a second angle because we're using the 4K and then we push in to get another second angle. See, now I'm no good. Now I got this, now I got the 600 on. This is where you'd switch if you had another body. You would switch to another lens that's wider so you could get whatever action's going on here. With the 600, again, you're limited with the action that you can shoot because as soon as they get too close, they're out of range or they're too close to you. The 600 is great for isolating the subjects at a distance, but not for the action around the goal. Maybe down at the other end, but not so much here. So maybe in the second half, being that they play 45 minute halves, I can switch different lenses for different, uh, for different opportunities in front of the net. That's called motor driving, spraying and praying. I know I was cutting him off after a while. I just wanted to see what would happen. I don't even know how, and look at that. It's already done writing to the card. That's how fast these are, these XQDs. I just took, let's go back and see how many shots in a row I took, so watch this. I'm gonna go like this to pinch more to see how many shots I took. Look at this. All of those, one, one two, three, four, I don't even know how many. I'm gonna have to figure this out in a second. So the important thing is how does the autofocus track a subject when they're coming at you at 12 frames a second that you're shooting? Well, I went through 35 shots in a row of a player running at me and it handled very well. At least from looking at it on the back of the screen, it looked like everything was in focus for those 35 shots. The hardest thing for cameras to do is track subjects coming right at you, and it did a fantastic job. And a lot of cameras may lock up after 35 raw shots in a row, but this camera chewed it up and spit it out without a problem. What do I mean by that? I shot those 35 frames, the XQD cards took the images right from the buffer as quick as possible, and they didn't lock up at all. It moves fast. It moves a ton of data quickly, and it's just absolutely incredible.
One of the hard things to do when you're using a 600 millimeter is try and find the subject, basically find where the ball is. It's always, it's hard to see because you have such a narrow field of view with your 600, you just have to have your head on a swivel to try to find what you're looking for. Because I still haven't found what I'm looking for. So the ergonomics felt very well. This camera felt at home in my hands. It's, it's been tweaked a little bit from the D4S. It has a new thumb thing on the back that is much easier to rest your finger on or your thumb on when you're shooting vertically. It handles very well in the hands. It feels great. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. It's a professionally built body. It feels great in the hands. Quickly acquires focus. So what's cool on these uh, D5s, you have these dot, these jog up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, flex, start buttons right here that can move the focusing points where I want them, whether I'm in vertical or whether I'm in horizontal, it's a quicker way to move your focusing points rather than using this. Oh, action. Woo! I found the action really quick. This is good. Light's still not fully gone. I'm gonna push my ISO a little further. 6400 now. Now the camera also offers you the 3D tracking capability. That is good if you're shooting fighter jets flying in the sky to track the subject, but I don't like letting the camera decide where to focus with the 3D focusing just in case it misses. For example, if it hits the guy's foot, because that's the closest thing to the camera and then the face is out of focus, that's not something I want. So I, I make sure to select my focusing points. I'm gonna test out 153 as well as 72 throughout the game. So is 153 auto focusing points too many? I don't think so. When they first announced it, I thought, whoa, what is the inside of this camera gonna look like? Are there gonna be focus points all over the thing? Is it gonna be hard to change them independently? Because I like to move them independently with the joystick dial. 153 was perfectly fine, and having 99 of them be cross-type is even more amazing, because cross-types are where you want it to be to help you get tack-sharp focus when you are shooting. And the autofocus is that good that when you're in continuous, it will jump from autofocus point to auto focus point if the subject that you're tracking jumps from one area to the next. So I switched to the 70 to 200 because I feel like I want to try and get some of those action shots because I got bored of the tight ones with the 600. That's all well and good for a while, but the action is what I want to get. That's why we switched. Like I said, you never know when the action's gonna happen in front of you. I just switched to the 70 to 200 and we got something coming down right in front of us. All right, so it's halftime right now. Let's talk about how this is going so far. Right off the rip, you'll feel how powerful this camera is. But overall, the camera looks unbelievable. It's handling extremely well. I'm very happy with the results as of now, at least looking at it on the back of the screen. But other than that, what I'm looking forward to in the second half, I want to get those tight shots again. That's my main focus, those tight head-to-toe shots. Try to get some of that action around midfield of the players jumping and headballing with multiple people in the frame for those, and then keep trying to figure out what's going to happen next so I can be prepared for it. Now that it's completely dark out, this is where we'll push the ISO. Right now I'm at 8,000. We're gonna push it even further if I have to to get my shutter speed up there to try to get the best exposure possible, but push the ISO just a little bit. So here we go. Let's get ready for the second half. running into an issue 
when the guy got really close down the sideline, there wasn't a lot of light hitting him. Not much you can do about that. Not much you can do about that, honestly. So this is the first Pro and Nikon that has a touch screen. Now, I wish it gave me the ability to touch the menu system and make changes that way, but it doesn't. I still have to use the joystick to do that. But it's so intuitive when you're reviewing images to cycle through the images just by swiping your fingers or doing a pinch to zoom and seeing the images like that without having to hit the plus minus button, without having to do anything other than you don't have to move the jog dial around anymore. You just touch on the screen where you want, you move your finger around, the picture moves with it, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can even get the checkerboard up there, meaning you can get four shots up there, you can get 32 shots up there just by going like this or going like this. This is what I've been waiting for, to get stuff in front of the net like this. We got some action in front of the net, switched to the 300, got it right. It's always good when you get one right every once in a while. So we know that this D5 can go to 3 million ISO in high five. Now I didn't push it that far out here and natively the highest ISO it can do is around 102,000. Now the highest I pushed it out here tonight was about 16,000 ISO around F4 at 1 4,000th of a second. Now I stuck with a higher shutter speed than I thought I would have. At the beginning of the game, I thought I would be at 1 1,000th of a second around that area. Now I could have lived there and dropped the ISO a little bit, but I wanted to bump it up a little higher, be around 8,000 ISO, 12,800, 16,000, just to see how the files will hold up in post when we get back to the loft to go ahead and edit them. But so far, the ISOs look extremely clean, at least from the back of the screen. When I zoomed all the way in, everything looked really good. So here are my thoughts from using the Nikon D5 out here at the Philadelphia Union game. It handled so well. It's almost like an old friend because I went from the D3 to the D3S to the D4 to the D4S and now I have the D5. Now this camera handles so well. It feels great in the hands but the important things are how does it work when you're shooting in a real world situation? Well, the autofocus worked incredibly well. It was so fast and tack sharp when I needed it to be. And also, using those lenses that I was using, the 600 f4, the 400 2.8, the 300 f4, the 70 to 200 2.8, those are the best of the best of the best with Honor Sur lenses that you can possibly use on a camera like this. I seriously hope I don't take a ball in the face over here. That's the last thing that we need right now. So there's no better way to end than with a win, and that's what just happened in the last two minutes of play. The Union scored a goal, but now we're out here to wrap up this real world review. So in order to tell you if this camera passes the sniff test, we need to take these files back into the loft to edit them to see how they really turned out. Because I can't look at a three inch screen from here and say this is the greatest camera since sliced bread, though it handled extremely well and at least based off of the previews on the back of the screen, everything looked fantastic. The camera handled extremely well and so far everything that I've done with it 
I am very happy with, but we need to send it back to the loft right now to see how the final images actually look. So here we are back in the loft to wrap up the real world review. And I want to let you know that we're using the D5 to film in 4K right now. You can click up on the screen to go check out the 4K footage that it's capturing right now. But right before we went to film this, we realized we only get three minutes at 4K and that's just not enough when I need to spit out information for probably 10 minutes or so. So what we had to do is use the HDMI out to go to the Atomos so that we could record unlimited amount of time. Now, I hope Nikon is working on a firmware update so that they can put it out so that you can get more than three minutes in 4K because that just isn't enough for most real world situations. So I want to remind you that before I show you all of the images, you can download all the full res images from multiple photo shoots that I've done with the Nikon D5, as well as download some select raw files so that you can pixel peep, you can edit, you can print, you can do whatever you want with those files. A real world review is not complete until you look at actual images that you've taken in the real world. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's go over to the first image that I have up on the screen right here. And this is obviously a soccer image from the shoot. Now, this was taken at 1 4,000th of a second at f3.2 at 10,000 ISO with a 70 to 200 2.8. Now, when you zoom in one to one, this is when I start really messing with my head because I don't want to look for issues with the camera or with anything. But when you zoom in one to one, you have to remember that you're enlarging the image so much that you're going to find imperfections. Now, I wish this looked sharper to me, but remember that it's not a headshot. So it's not going to be as sharp as a very tight full frame headshot. But when I come down here to the feet, you got this guy's foot, you got this guy's foot, and they look to be sharper. Now, I don't know if it's, you know, and the pant leg looks to be sharper. And what I want to say here is it's not really off a ton. Now, it shouldn't be off by much, but this may be human error. This may be my fault in the settings that I used out there shooting because I'm still new to learning the 153 point autofocus system. I'm not trying to make excuses for being soft in certain areas or slightly being out because it's happened with many cameras before. I just think it may be human error and I need to get better with the new focusing system. Now it didn't happen all the time. There's just subtleties where when I look at it, I go, oh, I wish this was a little sharper. But at 10,000 ISO, it looks really good. Moving over to the next shot, this is 16,000 ISO. And unlike the last image, you can see that this is super tack, super tack sharp. The focusing speed on this camera is tremendous. Now, I need to get better with finding which settings are supposed to be used, whether it's the dynamic focus, whether it's the, uh, should I do single point AF? Should I be doing the 72, the 153? I need to work on that, but this hit perfectly fine at 16,000 ISO. And before anybody says, well, why did you shoot at such a high ISO? It's because we're testing out the camera. We want to see how it works in the real world review. And for anybody wondering, if I went to 8,000 ISO to get the same exact exposure, all I would need to do is drop my shutter speed in half to one two thousandth of a second at F4 at 8,000 ISO, and I would have had the same exposure. Again, this is with a 600 millimeter F4, but what I want to show you right here is a real print. This is a print off the Canon ProGraph 1000. Look at this. When you look at this, you do not see any issues with the image. It's tack sharp. It looks amazing. The, uh, the color looks great at 16,000 ISO. And that's what you have to remember. When you zoom in one-to-one -one on the computer, you're going to blow it up to an extremely huge amount. This is a 17 by 22 print, which is large, and it looks absolutely fantastic. You cannot really see the noise or the grain that is there unless you get super close to the image. Now let's keep moving here. This was one of the shots from the 35 frames in a row where most of them hit perfectly well. This is one of my favorite shots from it. I have a print of this as well, and the colors look right on. The picture looks very good. This is done with a 600 millimeter 
Again, a 600 F4. Here's another action shot going to the net. I think this looks perfectly fine as well using the 600 millimeter. You got to use the right tools for the job, and this was it. So I'm happy with this shot. Now to throw some color in there, we've got the, the extra green shirt. I wanted to see how that would look in there. The bimbo or whatever they call it looks great. The focus is nice and tight and sharp on the goalie here. Um, this is a very nice shot. Look how the bokeh blows out in the background. So again, very happy with the shots. Now, I picked this one because I was off by about a stop and a half. This is where it started. Now, as the players got closer to the sidelines, the lights weren't as good. And I'll turn to this camera because if you're shooting hockey or if you're shooting basketball, those are more reflective surfaces, especially hockey. It's white and reflective, which is going to take the lights from above and bounce them up and put fill light into people's faces. But soccer, the field is sucking up all the light. It's not reflecting it back into their face, but it could be giving a color cast. And that's why when people look down, there's a shadow underneath, and that's going to mess with your exposure. So I brought it back after the fact, and this is at 10,000 ISO, and you can see that I brought it back. Don't mind the grain that you see on the screen or the noise right now because again this is one to one printed out this would be perfectly fine very happy with it still being able to focus in the low light in the darkness here because look he is extremely dark from the shadow because the lights weren't hitting him and the focus still found him and did great just another good action shot in front of the net very happy with that a guy running down the field 16,000 ISO with the ball happy with that as well and then we got the people in the crowds that are cheering because that's what people in the crowd are doing and they look perfectly fine to me right there last one of that guy before I move into the other sports I just want to let you know that the pixel peeping that I'm doing, testing this out, is, is going to a little bit of an extreme. I am pushing the ISO to limits that you probably wouldn't do, but you can see that with this camera, you can absolutely do it. The focus speed, I haven't used a camera that focuses as fast as this camera does, especially with the best glass on there that I was putting there. The shooting speed at 12 frames a second continuous is extremely incredible. In terms of focus, I'm very happy with just about all of the shots. I just feel like somewhere I'm doing something wrong because the reason I say that is because as we move into some of the other shots and get into where there is single focus, you can see that we're tack freaking sharp in single focus. And when I get to the, the, the portraits, you're going to see that as well. This is the Philly Fanatic filling the frame, 400 millimeter, 2.8. Of course, lower ISO, perfectly fine before the lights went out. But you can see that that looks tremendous and looks great. Then we have a Philly's picture, 25. 100 ISO, one four thousandth of a second, 400 millimeters. Let me show you the foot again. I also have a print of this because this print looks incredible. This is sharp down here into the pant leg, and it's sharp up here. Is this sharp, or am I just overanalyzing this or not? It looks good. Is it subtly out? I don't know. Go download the raw file. You can figure it out for yourself to see if it is or if it isn't, but the print looks absolutely incredible. And again, it's not a headshot. Like, well, I'm just gonna jump to a headshot real quick just to show you guys. Look, this is 600 millimeters. Let's zoom in on that. Let that load up. And you can see, by the way, this is 16,000 ISO indoors. It is sharp as a tack using single point focus. So we know it can hit. I haven't had problems with it hitting. Speaking of hitting, this guy broke his bat. I just thought it was a cool shot to, to showcase. You can see the broken bat flying pieces of the bat going everywhere. This is 600 millimeters out of the baseball field. Looks great. Running the bases, 600 millimeters. Again, you can download this. Now this is sharp. You can see the face looks tack sharp. The focus, one of the hardest things to do is have a player running at you or an athlete or anybody running at you and get the continuous focus to be great. Shot after shot after shot of this image was in focus and it looks great. Moving on, we've got uh, Ryan Howard up the bat. You got the ball right on the bat. This is a wider shot, um, 1 2500th of a second at 3200 ISO. Looks great. Colors look great. Focus looks great. Happy with the shot. Skateboarding, because everybody wants to see low ISO. Also, they wonder how's the low ISO capability, because there's been some complaints from some people writing it up. I don't have a problem with it. Everything looks great. You can download this raw file as well. Um, nice and sharp. This is with the 70 200 2.8. Everything looks great right here. Happy with those action shots. I love the focus of this camera. Then we move into a shot like this. Have a print of this as well. Looks great. 70 to 200, 
We already talked about this shot, and I'm going to leave you with this shot right here at 81,275 at 200 millimeters. This shot doesn't get any sharper. To show you something at 81,275 is absolutely incredible. That's not somewhere you ever thought you would be able to shoot, but the cameras continue to get better. The sharpness of this is incredible. The fact that I printed this out at 17 by 22 and it looks awesome is a testament to the quality of the glass and the quality of the cameras as they continue to get better and the focus continues to grow and just everything gets better with the camera. Like I said, you can download the full res exports of everything that I've taken and as well as download some raw files because that's what you guys need to look for and that's what a real world review does you take pictures in the real world and then you deliver the sample images for people to decide for themselves whether the images are good or they aren't good and is this camera for them now the d5 is not for everybody it's a $6,500 camera I already purchased mine I'm going to continue to work with it so that I can get that focus where I want it to be it's really darn close to where I want it to be. I just think that it comes down to human error right now that I may be doing something wrong and I'm gonna figure that out as I continue to shoot and it's going to get better. So this has been a real world review of the Nikon D5. I hope you enjoyed it. You can go over to the website to check out everything and that is where I'll leave it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.